Are you new to roller skating and looking for ways to fall safely at the skate park? Or are you looking for ways to fall safely without relying on your knee pads? Well, then you came to the right place. Stay tuned. What's up skaters? My name is Roller Ghoulie and today I'm going to be talking about falling safely at the skate park. Some of the best skaters out there are also the most skilled at falling. Knowing how to fall properly on roller skates will help build confidence to keep trying new tricks and build your progression as well as prevent injury. If you're looking to learn how to roller skate better, then I strongly recommend learning how to safely fall on roller skates. Now before I get into the nitty gritty of how to fall on your skates, I am going to let you know that I won't be going over knee slides with knee pads. My friend Missy already made a video that covers all of that, so if you want to learn how to do that, please check out her video, which we will link below. But definitely stick around if you want to learn different techniques of falling, or if you want to learn how to fall without having to rely on your knee pads. There are a few reasons why I stopped wearing knee pads specifically. Sometimes I still wear small knee pads underneath my um, pants or my jeans, but for the most part I stopped wearing those bulky knee pads with the hard covers. This is because I focus on street skating, which is ledges, rails, gaps, things like that. And sometimes that style of skating takes very precise leg and foot placement to get certain grinds. And the knee pads can be pretty constricting and get in the way. So I lean myself off from using those types of knee pads and I have adapted the way that I fall to make up for that and also changed the way that I fell to try to prevent injury and to just sort of create the safest possible way to fall for me. Disclaimer, there is no way to fall that's gonna completely eliminate injury. There's no surefire way to have a complete safe fall. There's no magic answer to this. Falling is, inev is inevitable with skating and sometimes injury is too. So regardless of the type of skater you are, there isn't going to be one answer out there of how to fall to completely avoid injury or ways to avoid falling altogether. So everyone's going to have a different perspective on falling and differing opinions on what might be the safest options for falling. So today I'm just going to share with you three ways that I tend to fall that I feel is safest for my style of skating. Let's first go over the most common ways to fall. Especially with beginners, I often see falling backwards. So if you land from a trick or even if you're just skating on flat ground and you accidentally put your weight too far backwards, it's really common for your feet to slip out from underneath you and for you to fall back on your butt and sometimes even hit your head or put your arms back um, and fall onto your arms. Another really common way of falling is by tripping forward. You know, sometimes we wheel lock ourselves, we trip ourselves up or we land or do something that places our weight too far forward and we end up falling forward under our knees and our hands. And another way is if you're skating backwards or you go to do a rotation where you land backwards, it's really common to accidentally place your weight too far forward and then while your momentum is going backwards, you fall forward onto your hands or your knees. There are certainly some do's and don'ts with falling and I'm gonna go over some of those common ways to fall and how to sort of correct them to try to have a safer outcome as well as the don'ts um, to try to avoid that commonly will cause injury or pain or bruising, etc. So falling backwards, that is probably the most common way that I see people falling, especially when they're first learning because getting your balance and figuring out where to place your weight when you land or when you're just skating around, that can be pretty tricky and takes a few years, sometimes months, depending on the progression that you have as a skater, but it can take some time to figure out how to get good at displacing your weight and not losing your balance so much. It still happens to me, I've been skating for eight years and I still fall backwards all the time, but I've found ways to try to make up for it to have a safer landing. So the don'ts of this fall. So it is really hard to try to correct a fall in a split second in the moment that you're falling, but it's definitely possible. So if you try to ingrain it in your brain to try to do these techniques and you practice them over time, they will become more of a second nature for you and you won't have to think about it as much. 
but if you feel that you are falling backwards, it is very common to want to put your arms down to try to stop the fall and that can cause wrist damage or injury to your arms or your wrists. Also, a lot of times if people are feeling themselves fall backwards, they think that their butt might be a safe option, but you can actually end up falling too hard on your tailbone, which is a very fragile part of your body and you can injure your tailbone and even whiplash your head back even hitting your head or just causing some neck damage um, from that whiplash motion. So I try my best to avoid falling straight backwards like that with a lot of impact. And the ways that I have tried to change myself from doing that is by turning myself to the side. That's the most common way that I have trained myself to fall. Instead of going straight backwards, I have started to turn my body over to the side to fall on my hip. Of course, this still can cause some pain and I do have bruises on my hips most of the time, but the side of your body with your hip and the side of your leg is a more durable anatomy or structure of your body than your tailbone or your head or your wrists. So I find that by twisting to the side, I'm falling on a meatier part of my body that provides a little bit more cushion. There's not as fragile body parts there or bony structures. And usually this helps me not put so much weight directly onto my hands and it takes more of the brunt on my hip than on my hands. I also use the turning and falling on my side technique in ramps. If I see that I'm slipping out of a trick or I feel myself slipping out of a trick, I try to slide down the ramp on my side instead of catching myself on directly on my arms or slipping backwards because falling into a ramp really hard onto your arms can cause injury or falling straight backwards gives you a greater chance of hitting your head. So I try my best to fall on my side and slide out of it on the ramp. A ramp is a really good way of being able to slide out of a fall because you have a slope or a slide that carries you. Whereas when you do the side falling on flat ground, you may not slide as much because you don't have as much momentum to carry you, but um, it's still effective. And I find in ramps that it is easier to do that technique because you can just kind of slide down the ramp but I also do that in ramps and I find it to be kind of a lifesaver in some instances when I fall and I'm able to get myself to go to the side. The other way to combat falling straight backwards on your tailbone or hitting your head would be to make yourself small. If you've ever taken a class from me, you've probably heard me say this before, but if you're gonna land out of a trick, it's really important to compress yourself as much as you can to make yourself small. And you want to do this not only to provide better compression in your body and not injure your spine, but also to make your falls smaller. So if you are going to take um, a heavy impact, let's say you're jumping a stair set or you're doing a grind and you're la landing out of a ledge or a rail, something like that, you want to really compress yourself to make yourself small to absorb that impact but if um, there is a chance that you might fall from that impact then you want to um, take a smaller fall because if you're standing straight up when you land let's say i'm five foot seven and if i land standing straight up and down i'm going to be falling almost six feet to the ground whereas if i compress myself and make myself small and I fall, then I'm falling maybe three or four feet. So there is a difference if you make yourself small and you fall. It's much less impact and usually you have more control over the way the impact disperses rather than if you stand straight up and your skates slip out from underneath you. So you'll see a lot in my videos of me falling that I compress myself before I fall. Even if I do fall backwards and put my hands down and fall on my butt, I usually make myself a lot smaller than if I was standing straight up and down and that helps a lot with not having such a heavy impact on those fragile structures. Now the next common way to fall is by tripping up or putting your weight too far forward and you end up falling forward onto your hands or your knees. So the way that I have been taught by others, especially skateboarders and inliners, is to roll out of these kinds of falls. Now that might seem pretty awkward when you have five pounds attached to your feet. However, this is a pretty safe way to fall. 
Um, it might just feel awkward at first, but if you get used to the idea of rolling out of a fall, it does feel pretty safe. You will most commonly see this in skateboarding since they don't have anything attached to their feet. It's really easy for them to roll out of a fall. And what this does is disperses the impact as well as the momentum. So you're allowing momentum to carry with you instead of trying to let it all stop into the pavement at once with a heavy impact. Um, so it's a gradual, slowing down of the momentum and it's dispersing the impact so that you're not um, taking all the impact on one part of your body. You may have seen in some of my fall videos that I tend to throw my legs up in the air <laughs> um, and this is not accident, this is on purpose. And when I do this it usually helps carry the momentum and disperse the impact as my legs come up. Um, so I'm kind of, it's my own way of rolling out of a fall. But this is very common in skateboarding or other extreme sports disciplines, you'll see a lot of people rolling out of things and it just seems to be the best way to disperse an impact instead of taking a heavy blow. Now this last way that I try to save my falls is specific to people who have toe stops. So if you don't have toe stops, that's okay, but this fall technique is not for you. Um, I'm very heavy on my toe stops. I use them often. If you're looking for ways to get good at using your toe stops, I recommend walking around in your house in them, doing simple tasks in them just to get used to them. Um, but at this point in my skating journey, I am very comfortable on my toe stops and I'm confident in using them to slow myself down or to stop myself from a fall or to slow down the momentum of a fall. So if I am doing a transition, so I go to jump backwards and I'm now skating backwards and I feel myself tipping forward, I will use my toe stops to slow down that momentum before any other part of me touches the ground. So you can still put your arms down or tap a knee. I try not to tap my knees down because they're usually unprotected and you really want to protect your knees as much as you can. but. I try my best to stop myself as much as I can with my toe stops before I touch the ground with anything else. And you can also use this technique in ramps. So for example, if I go to do an air on a ramp and the air didn't go so well and my weight got dispersed weird, then I will put my toe stops down to try to stop the brunt of the force of a fall to prevent myself from like hitting my face down or hitting my knees or just full force putting my arms down. I've also used my toe stops in a pinch if I'm falling forward, skating forward, and I quickly turn around and use my toe stops to stop myself. I find it to be really helpful to slow down the impact and kind of absorb the impact before any other parts of my body touches the ground, and that tends to lighten the load a lot. Again, I'm not saying these techniques are gonna be exactly right for you and because they might not be right for everybody and everyone has differing opinions about safety gear and ways to fall and different feelings about what's best for their style of skating. So please take this with a grain of salt. Um, don't go out there and think that these are gonna be a guaranteed way to prevent injury, but that is what I have learned from my own personal experience that feels the best for me, and I hope that this has helped you in some way. If you have other tips and tricks for falling that you wanna share with our viewers, please put them in the comments. We love to see them, and so do our viewers. It's always great to share experiences from your skate journey, and it helps all of us on our skate journey. Please wear all the safety gear that makes you feel comfortable and be respectful of others' choices. We're all on our own personal journeys doing what feels best for us. So the whole point is to have a good time and have a good experience for yourself. If you have any other skate-related questions, maybe about maintenance, gear, anything skates related, please feel free to book an appointment with one of our trusted skaters through our virtual skate shop via moxieskates.com. Till next time, stay safe out there and happy skating.